Uh, we're joined by Ryan Payne. He's the president at Payne Capital Management. Uh, Ryan, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, so I know a few months ago you came on and you were a big bull on energy and bank stocks. And those seem to be the two sectors that have been holding up pretty well. Are you still bullish on them? <laughs> I feel like I should get a gold star or something because we did call <laughs> it exactly right. Not to mention, you know, I said be bullish last year when everyone else was against that trade. Um, but yes, I think these are this is a longer term um, theme that you're going to see. And the big thing is, look, we talked about is inflation going to kick in? Are we going to see inflation? Well, inflation is here, right? We look at interest rates. We're almost up to 1.4 percent on the 10-year Treasury. Commodity prices, prices, Kristen, are going through the roof. I mean, you've seen. Energy prices go up over 20% this year. Copper was up like 17% in one month. Lumber prices up 50%, corn up 30%. Mm -hmm. So we're already seeing inflation. And inflationary pressure probably is going to be a long-term trend. We've created so mm -hmm. much money. The government is now talking about a $1.9 trillion stimulus plan on top of the, the amounts of money they've already created. So this all creates inflation, what we're seeing. And that's how you have to position your portfolio right now. OK, so what do you anticipate? I mean, we haven't seen losses like this on the Nasdaq, perhaps uh, since pre since COVID times hit first in March. Obviously, we've seen pullbacks along the way, uh, but back to back days of what could be two percentage point losses um, on each back to back day just this week is pretty notable uh, for the Nasdaq, Ryan. So how long do you expect this selling pressure to continue? Well, I think the bottom line is when you start looking at tech, and this is exactly what we talked about back in the fall, is it became fully valued. I mean, last year it was the perfect storm for tech. I mean, literally, Amazon doubled their earnings. They went from $10 billion to $20 billion in earnings. That's like an enormous number. And you just have to think of the law of large numbers. It's really hard to go now from $20 billion to $40 billion. It's probably not going to happen. So when you start looking at those multiples, and we talked about this back in the fall, you know they're, they're just fully priced. Uh, Apple stock now at 30 times forward earnings. That's a stock that used to trade at like 15, 16 times forward earnings. And one of the reasons Warren Buffett bought it back in 2016, and one of the reasons today, while he's been taking profits on that and buying those good old-fashioned energy stocks, financial stocks, which benefit from the reopening of the economy. So you know this could be a short-term pullback, but when you start thinking about Where's the opportunity going to be? Where's the earnings growth going to be? It's not going to be in tech anymore. It's going to be in the reopening of the economy and other parts and other sectors of the market benefit from that, you know, in a much wider, greater degree than tech stocks. You know, tech was the last 10 years. Tech's not the next 10 years. Interesting. OK, uh, what is the next 10 years? I'm sure there are certain sectors within technology like space, for instance, LIDAR technology that might be on the upswing. Uh, but Ryan, when we look at the opportunities in this market, obviously financials, um, energy, steel sectors that you're interested in, what else uh, could be catching a rising tide? Well, I think the, anything's materials based, right? That ties into the commodity trade. Also, the other big trend happening right now in plain sight that we don't talk enough about is the dollar is just getting weaker and weaker. That's very good for the global economy because as the dollar weakens, that means that anything you own global starts to go up in price. So the international markets, which also are very cyclical in nature, so they're more sensitive to the reopening of the economy, you're going to get more exposure to those type of stocks. But on top of that, that weaker dollar also pushes those stocks up even further. So you get like a double whammy there with not only do you get the cyclicals that benefit from the reopening of the economy, because it's not just here in the U.S., it's happening globally, and that's why the emerging markets are outperforming this year. Uh, developed markets are doing really well this year. And also, it's also play on that weak dollar that was very strong for the last 10 years. So, like, I can't stress it enough. You need to own a global portfolio for the next 10 years. The action's not going to be in the U.S. It's going to be outside the U.S. Interesting. Okay, so developed markets, emerging markets. Um, anything else quickly, Ryan, before we move on outside of the U.S. that you like? Uh, small caps as well. You got to own small caps versus large caps. Small caps, again, are more sensitive to the reopening of the economy. They're more cyclical in nature. Um, they trade at much lower multiples than technology does, and they're dramatically outperforming the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's a longer term trend that you need to have in your portfolio. Okay, let's talk Tesla and Bitcoin uh, because still Elon Musk in the headlines, stealing the headlines as has been the case over the past year and beyond. Uh, but Tesla shares down worse than 25% from their all-time high of $900 and Bitcoin continuing to be on a swing. 
Is Bitcoin something, uh, Ryan, that you've picked up over the past year? Do you think it should be in people's portfolios? I really just don't understand how anyone's ever going to use it. I mean, it, until you see some sort of economic use where you can actually buy and sell things, like I can go to Starbucks and use Bitcoin, I'm not really convinced that it's the next currency we're going to use. Never mind the fact that, you know, it's very hard to trace it. Uh, it's very good for anything you want to buy on the black market. But for any sort of normal purchases you want to buy, it's not really the greatest place to be. And what blows my mind is on Monday, the market cap of Bitcoin hit a trillion dollars, Christian. You could literally go out and buy the entire energy sector, and we know I love energy right now, for all the Bitcoin right now based on the value that it had on Monday. You could go out and buy all the infrastructure, all the physical assets, all the profits of those energy companies. So I have to think here as a long-term play, it might just be a lot of people sitting home with their stimulus checks, you know, betting on Bitcoin. I call it the, fool's, the greater fool's theory. Someone's hoping, some fool is hoping another fool is going to buy it at a higher price than they bought it at. So I'm not invested in Bitcoin and I don't really believe in the long term viability of it. As of today, I could change my mind. But I think right now, probably not the best place to be allocating your capital. Interesting. Uh, the Reddit fueled rally that we've seen in stocks like GameStop and others, has that caused you to switch up your portfolio allocations at all? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, I think that's a very small percentage of the market. You know, it's maybe 5% of the market right now. And again, it, there's just no fundamental reason. You're, you're seeing a lot of gambling like uh, you know, action going on in those markets. And to me, this is like the greatest opportunity ever because you have all these old school sales that stocks rather that are on sale that you can buy right now with big dividends, low multiples that are going to keep benefiting from the fact that the end of the year is just going to be like, it's basically going to be a party when you start looking at what GDP growth is going to be at the end of the year, Kristen. I've joked about this, but I'm going to have like 100 parties on my roof this summer. And, you know, people are going to be spending money and they're going to benefit. The old school stocks are going to benefit from that. So that's really where you got to start to think like you've got great value in the market right now. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of asset classes that are trading cheap that are just going to benefit massively from this reopening of the economy. So to sit here and gamble in, on stocks that have huge multiples that are clearly just speculation that's not an investment strategy. That's just gambling. And right now you've got the best opportunity ever to be an investor. Okay, my question then is, is Lucid Motors a gamble, Ryan? This is a company trying to compete with Tesla, going public via a SPAC worth billions of dollars. Is that a stock you like? I mean, I'd have to look at the multiple, but I'm assuming it's probably outrageous right now. And it's not that these, some of these companies won't be around, Kristen. It's the problem is you're getting profits priced in for like 40, 50, in some cases, like 200 years. And at some point, you know, that irrationality in the market's gonna become rational and the market's gonna care about immediate profits again, especially when you have inflation. When you have inflation, those high multiples become less attractive. So really, the reopening of the economy and inflation are the anti-tech trade. They're the anti, like, all these hot companies that they may have great long, long-term potential, but it's already been priced in today so the opportunity, I would argue, is lost. You may be able to buy these stocks for much cheaper in the future. Let's face it, Amazon back in the late 90s eventually went down 92%. So you could have waited to buy Amazon at like the cheapest price ever, and then it became one of the biggest companies in the world. So any of these companies you really love, you think they've got long-term potential, but the multiple is extremely high. I argue here you could wait on it. At some point, you're going to get a massive sell-off in these stocks, and you can pick them up a lot cheaper. Interesting. All right, Ryan Payne, always good to get your take. Uh, Ryan is a president at Payne Capital Management, and we'll have to check in with him soon to see how those picks in energy and banks are doing.